Today is all about girl power and redressing the gender balance. According to the United Nations, women are seen as being more vulnerable than men to the impacts of climate change, mainly because they represent the majority of the world's poor and are more dependent on threatened natural resources. There are lots of women here at COP, but when it comes to the more senior decision-making positions, the global leaders, those involved in discussions, well, the gender imbalance is rather predictably and somewhat depressingly obvious. So how do we encourage more women into climate science? I asked some of the amazing and inspirational women here in Glasgow for what advice they would give to other women who want to get involved in climate. The most important thing is that you have the passion and want to be involved and don't see that gender as one area could be something that could be stood against or for you. But I think that definitely when I first started as a forecaster nearly 20 years ago, there were far fewer female forecasters. And then when you did try and go into the jobs or particularly into frontline stations that were very male dominated and male orientated, it was a lot harder to be taken seriously because not only were you female, you were also young and also to be seen as being credible. So you ended up having to work a lot harder than somebody of the same age or a different sex as me just because of my age and my gender. Anything is insurmountable. I've come from a non-science background and I am now at the forefront of my career here in Scotland. So anything is possible. Don't let anything hold you back. I think it's really important that science is as diverse as possible, not just diverse in gender, but diverse in, in all types of, of people, uh, colours, varieties, etc. And I, I think one of the challenges we have as women in science is appropriate role models. So I'd say to, to female students and male students, if you're interested in pursuing a career in science, there are so many different types of careers that are possible. So reach out to people, reach out to those that are a few years ahead of you in their career, reach out to people in the middle of their career, understand their journey and, and what choices they made to, to develop their career path and what education they require to get to where they are today. There's something for everyone out there. You just have to feel where your heart takes you because when it comes down to a career, you're doing that for life, so you have to do something you love. If you're interested in a career in climate, then there's opportunities really to get involved at all different levels. So whether that's in research, uh, whether it's in data, whether it's in communication, consultation, policy making, uh, there's an opportunity to get involved. And really, it's really important that we get a broad range of people. So complete equality across everybody involved. So I'd encourage you from whatever background whatever gender get involved with climate just go for it just do it even if you have that voice inside your head that is saying oh I'm not sure like I don't have all the criteria for this job spec like imposter syndrome is really common um, in women and you know you just gotta do the opposite of what your brain tells you basically and just go for it you have nothing to lose get involved because we absolutely need to have everyone involved in creating um, the solutions that are going to work for um, for everyone and we need a diversity of voices in terms of doing that. Jump in and, and seize opportunities but also to form networks um, with other women as, as well as men so that we can mentor each other and, and help us um, ascend the ranks into senior leadership of science where we really desperately need to see more women. In terms of getting into senior positions, some of it perhaps is around imposter syndrome and feeling that there might be somebody who's better qualified than you, the perfect person, rather than accepting that we all bring different things and that what you have to say is a value in itself. There are some strange things about, about women. Please don't apologise for what you have to offer. The number of times I hear a female scientist start by going, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you want and then deliver something great and then go, I really hope that was what you wanted, when they didn't need to do that. And actually speaking with a degree of authority, whatever you feel like inside can help. And um, also not, not hiding in the back when it's your, your time to come to the front. So Cheryl Sandberg would say lean in and I guess that's a version of what I'm saying. You are qualified. <laughs> I'm just going to look straight at the camera for that one and say, you know, don't worry about not being ready. I think what makes women's leadership so essential is that women are collaborative leaders. We tend to be less competitive. 
we're willing to work with one another. And actually, climate change creates radical vulnerability. We have to admit that we're vulnerable in order to be impactful and work together. So I would say to the young women out there, you can do it. Get out there and lead. Go for it. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> Wise words from some wonderful women. The other theme for today was science and innovation. Could seaweed help mitigate the effects of climate change? Here's what Emily Shopper from Cambridge Zero told me. Some of the nature-based solutions that are being explored there, for example, are um, how can we restore our marine seascapes, um, look to um, cultivate uh, sea kelp, for example, which, um, just like trees, absorbs large amounts of um, carbon dioxide, um, but also could then have a positive benefit um, for our marine life at the same time, um, as well as potentially creating a food source um, both for humans and for, for livestock. And another area that I might highlight is digital technology, so there's a huge number of ways in which digital technologies are being used um, to support the transition to um, a, a zero carbon future, whether that's in terms of new apps to help support a circular economy, or whether it's in terms of using AI to generate um, new uh, green industrial um, processes. So it, it, I feel like it's a really exciting time of um, innovation and creativity. We need everyone to get involved in solving our climate crisis. Let's hope we can redress the gender balance at the same time.